Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Arshad Salanki. Here are the headlines we're tracking this evening. Sensex and Nifty end in the red for the second consecutive week despite a rebound on Friday. Sensex remains below 80,000 even after gaining over 800 points today. The government tables amendments to the Banking Regulation Act in the Lok Sabha allows depositors the option to nominate up to four people, including successive and simultaneous nominations, also raises the threshold of what can be defined as substantial interest in a bank from 5 lakh to 2 crore rupees. Ola Electric jumps over 17% after listing at the issue price of 76 rupees. Chairman Bhavish Agarwal tells CNBC TV 18 that e-scooters already account for 15% of the scooter market and was going up. The street now looks forward to the unveiling of its e-bike plan on August 15th. Former Deputy Chief Minister of Delhi Manish Sisodia is set to walk out of jail after 17 months. Supreme Court grants bail in the excise policy case. Apex Court rules the long period of incarceration without trial would be in grave violation of fundamental rights. Pulls up the High Court and Trial Court for playing it safe by denying bail. Former US President Donald Trump is leading Kamala Harris by just two percentage points in the presidential race according to a CNBC survey. Even as Harris gains ground, the poll shows Trump holds a substantial lead on the economy. Both Trump and Harris have agreed to a debate in September. A renewed push for a ceasefire in Gaza, the United States, Egypt and Qatar call on Israel and Hamas to resume negotiations by the 15th of August. Israel tells residents of Khan Yunus to evacuate once again as it prepares for another assault. Nobel laureate Mohammed Yunus, led 17-member interim government, takes charge in Bangladesh. Yunus himself will oversee a number of crucial ministries including defence, education and food ministry as per the last data available, Awami League's government leaves a per capita debt of over 1 lakh Bangladeshi rupees. Neera Chopra wins silver in javelin after Pakistan's Arshad Nadeem broke the Olympic record to win gold. India names ace shooter Manu Bhakar and hockey goalkeeper Srijesh as the flag bearers for the closing ceremony of the Paris Olympics. Every Indian should be proud of Vinesh Fogart's achievement, says 2008 Olympic gold medalist Abhinav Bindra, who met wrestler uh, who was disqualified ahead of a gold medal bout. Bindra also calls for improving regulations to ensure athletes compete on their natural weight categories. All right, uh, let's start with the market action. Sensex and Nifty gained over 1% today, but despite the rebound, both indices ended the week with losses of over 1%. This is the second consecutive week of losses for the markets. In the money market, the rupee remains on a tight leash, trading below the 84 mark against the US dollar. The rupee has remained closer to its all-time low all through this week. Right after hitting record levels in June, the inflow into equity mutual funds dropped by 9% in July. SIP inflows, however, came in at a record high. Sonal Bhutra is here with the Mutual Fund July report card. Over to you. July was a very interesting month. We had big events, the likes of budget, and this came in just after that rally post the election results as well. So it's been quite volatile as far as the numbers are concerned. Uh, in July, the equity flows, they ebbed, and we saw a lower number versus the June number. So equity fund flows came in at 37,113 crore rupees, which compares with the number of 40,573 crore rupees in the month of June. Now, equity fund AUM, that came in at 29.33 lakh crore rupees. And interestingly, again, and these are the sectoral funds which have contributed to majority of the equity AUM as well. As per the latest numbers, sectoral funds are 14% of equity fund AUM at 4.21 lakh crore rupees and it forms the largest chunk in terms of overall equity fund flows as well. So let's talk more about sectoral funds then. Yes, the number has come off on a month-on-month -month basis. There were fewer sectoral funds which were introduced as well. So that number has come at 18,386 crore rupees which compares with 22,351 crore rupees in the month of June. But the interest continues in sectoral funds and a lot of it has come in in form of NFOs as well, be it the Edelweiss Business Cycle Fund or the ICICI Pro Energy Fund as well. 
So in the month of July, there were 15 NFOs which garnered around 16,565 crore rupees. This compares with 17 NFOs in June, which garnered a lower number at 15,227 crore rupees. This NFO, largely led by multi-cap funds and sectoral funds, as I told you earlier, they garnered 13,753 crore rupees. So big chunk coming in from there. Uh, now let's talk about the other numbers. Large caps, the inflows have come down to 670 crore rupees versus 970 crore rupees. Similar is the story with mid caps. That's where we saw the inflows of 1644 crore rupees. This compares with 2528 crore rupees. Small caps, largely stable at 2100 crore rupees. This compares with around 2200 crore rupees. Now the gross SIP number, it is at a record high. That continues to be the case. July gross SIP is at 23,332 crore rupees, which compares with 21,262 crore rupees. This is on a month-on-month -month basis. But very important to understand the net SIP number because there have been a lot of redemptions as well. So that is a number which is important to track and, uh, uh, and will be important to track going forward as well. The funds that have done really well, hybrid funds, because there's been a big inflow of money there. In July, it saw inflows of 17,436 crore rupees, which compares with the June number of 8,855 crore rupees. But clearly, it's the sectoral theme again, which has done really well. Even debt funds have seen higher flows. Uh, the mark-to-market gains were higher this time around. Uh, so this is what the picture looks like. But yes, going forward, we'll watch out for what the flows are in uh, the sectoral theme, because that seems to be gaining space. Thank you, Sonal, for that. Ola Electric has made a tepid debut on the Lal Street. The stock listed at the issue price of 76 rupees a share on the NSE. However, soon after it hit the upper circuit of 20%, the company's IPO has been subscribed by over four times. Ola is now the only listed pure EV two-wheeler company. My colleague Ritu Singh caught up with Bhavish Agarwal, the chairman and MD, who said that the company will keep working to build a sustainable and healthy, profitable business. This Ola Electric story is a story of India's future. Mm. We are building India's future supply chains, India's manufacturing, uh, India's future products. And our ambition and mission is to really build India's leadership on the global stage. Mm. So uh, the fact that uh, the street has liked our story and liked uh, what we do, like the price, mm. is, a, is a very strong uh, positive. Uh, price will move up and down. Uh, I'm learning the ways of the market. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we will keep doing our work. We'll keep focusing on building good business, building uh, strong products, good products, building a sustainable uh, business also, and uh, hopefully creating wealth for investors in the long term. The broader uh, story that's playing out here is uh, the penetration story of electrification of EVs in India. Three years ago when we started, almost to the day, EV penetration in two-wheelers was almost zero. Mm. Now it is 6-7% uh, overall, and within scooters where all the action has been over the last two years, it is 15 plus percent. Mm. And the scooter penetration month on month is only going up. Yeah. Two years ago, the government used to give 60,000 rupees in fame subsidy. Mm -hmm. uh, now they give 10,000. Yeah. And the industry, not just us, but the whole industry has adjusted very well. Mm -hmm. They've rejected the cost structures and the industry continues to grow with reduced fame. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe this is the way of the future. Slowly, the incentives will uh, taper down mm -hmm. as companies become more stronger in their supply chain and their cost structures to be able to deliver uh, profit margins with uh, probably no subsidies in the, the future. The government has tabled amendments to the Banking Regulation Act in the Lok Sabha. The amendment will allow depositors the option to nominate up to four people, including successive and simultaneous nominations. Sapna Dans uh, joins us now. Uh, Sapna, several notable amendments in the bill. Take us through the key ones, please. Well, this is something that the Finance Minister had already spoken about uh, in her FI24 budget speech, wherein uh, she had made it very clear that for the convenience of investors and depositors, certain amendments will have to be brought to the banking law uh, bill, to the banking laws, uh, which would entail changes, simultaneous changes in RBI Act, SPI Act, uh, you know, the Banking Acquisition Act, uh, so on and so forth. So that's exactly what the government has done. It has tabled the banking laws amendment bill in the Lok Sabha. And what it essentially does is to basically give more flexibility to depositors as well as enhance the protection levels for investors. For instance, uh, as you've rightly pointed out, uh, the number of uh, you know, nominees allowed per account through this uh, amendment will go up from the current one to to four in number. A total of four can't exceed four. And within that also there will be a provision for uh, successive and uh, uh, you know consecutive uh, uh, nominations. So wherever it's successive it will be in order of priority like you know nominee one, two, three. Uh, wherever it's uh, consecutive uh, it basically means that um, you know 
three or up to four nominees coming together, it will have to be as a percentage of the deposit amount that is being held. So that needs to be kept in mind. Second, also in terms wherever your uh, you know wherever there are unclaimed deposits, uh, basically dividends, share, uh, bond money, interest all of that is unclaimed for a period of seven years, it gets transferred to the Investor Education Protection Fund. Uh, however, now, from now onwards, that money can be claimed or refunded uh, to investors. So basically, it kind of, you know, streamlines the entire thing. You don't have to go looking here and there, where, where are my unclaimed uh, dividends or where are my unclaimed shares, so to speak. Third, of course, uh, also it makes certain rules uh, uh, for the banking system as a whole makes it tighter in terms of bank reportage to the Reserve Bank of India in terms of the statutory requirements, statutory reports. Uh, you know, as of now, it was every reporting Friday, but now the dates are changed, uh, or rather they are proposed as you know, the last day of every uh, fortnight, uh, every month or every quarter, and all the banks will have to have the same timeline. You cannot have certain banks following one timeline and other banks following another timeline. So this brings consistency in the reporting of important information to the banking regulator. That's the intent of the government and of this bill. Uh, of course, other provisions, it gives also flexibility to the banks to uh, you know, basically uh, give a, a market-linked uh, remuneration uh, to hiring of auditors. So it makes it more competitive. They can actually go ahead and get the best talent in the market. This will help to in improve the quality of audits. So that's the intent. Last but not the least, also in terms of substantial interest, uh, you know, that is being redefined because the last uh, value was fixed sometime in 1960. Uh, so it was at that point in time 5 lakh ru or rupees, this is now being going to be raised to around 2 crore rupees. So these are some of the uh, major uh, takeaways. Of course, uh, in terms of the nomination, the number of nominees going up for bank accounts per bank yeah. account, I think that would be of great interest for consumers across the sector. All right. Uh, thank you, Sapna, for that uh, update on to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. The race to acquire more than 60 percent stake of CVC Capital and Healthcare Global is in its last lap. Sources have told CNBC TV 18 that private equity firm Bain Capital and Abu Dhabi based company Burjil have likely submitted their binding bids for the stake. CVC stake sale will trigger an open offer and the deal size is likely to be around 5000 crore rupees if the open offer is fully subscribed. Shares of Quatre Phillips surged more than 6% in today's trade. This after the company reported a 26% jump in cigarette volumes in the first quarter as compared to the same period last year. This volume growth is higher than uh, Godfrey Phillips's uh, peers, ITC and VST Industries. And uh, on another note, Samir Modi was ousted from the board. This week, amid a family feud over the control of group companies. The other directors did not support his reappointment. The big national story that we are tracking, the Supreme Court today granted bail to Delhi's former Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia in the liquor excise policy case. Sisodia has uh, spent 17 months in the jail. The apex court, while giving its judgment, said that the long period of incarceration without a trial would be in violation of his fundamental rights. Ashmit Kumar is here with more on the court's verdict. Ashmit. Well, let's bear in mind that it was in the month of February of last year, 2023, when he was arrested by the CBI. He's been incarcerated, he's been behind bars, and that is something that weighed on the mind of the Apex Court. The Supreme Court said that keeping him inside the jail for an unlimited period of time is not something that is tenable, is not something that uh, the Apex Court can gloss over. The Supreme Court said the fact that the bail is a right... Uh, that bail is the norm uh, going, and that uh, not grant of bail is rather the exception. The fact that he's been incarcerated for 17 years and the fact that trial has not even begun. These are sufficient grounds the Apex Court believe for granting him bail and for granting uh, immediate release of Manisha Sodia. Not just that, the Apex Court was also critical of the conduct of the ED as well as the CBI. Uh, the Supreme Court noted that in October of 2023, uh, they had said that the investigation will be completed in about seven to eight months' time. Uh, they had assured that the trial would begin, but the trial has not even begun. The Apex Court also noted that far from beginning of the trial, Given the fact the large volume of documents in play, there are over one lakh digitized documents, there are nearly 500 witnesses, 
given the scope of this trial, uh, the Supreme Court said that there's not even the remotest possibility of the trial concluding anytime soon. Not just that, the Apex Court also said that the alternative, which is uh, to send him to the trial court for granting bail, would be akin to making Manish Sisodia play a game of uh, snakes and ladders, and that that is not something uh, that the Apex Court will allow, that that would be a travesty of justice. And with these observations, the Apex Court granting immediate release of uh, Manish Sisodia. There are, of course, a few riders. He has to surrender his passport. There'll be limitations in terms of his movement. But the big story, of course, is that after 17 months of inca incarceration, the former Deputy Chief Minister of Delhi is set to walk out of the hard jail. Thank you, Ashmit, for that. On that note, it's time for a short break. Coming up next, every Indian should be proud of Vinesh Fogart's achievements as 2008 Olympic gold medalist Abhinav Bindra, who met the wrestler who was disqualified ahead of her gold medal bout. More on that when we return. Welcome back. Kamala Raja Energy is set to inaugurate a new battery manufacturing facility in Telangana. Speaking to CNBC TV18, company's chairman Jayadev Gala said India's EV battery industry will need protection from cheap Chinese imports, especially once domestic manufacturing capabilities pick up. He also added the new Telangana facility will start rolling out EV batteries by June 2025. For us to have access to that supply chain, Government, that's a bigger role that the government has to play. Mm -hmm. so on the one side, giving us some incentives and hand-holding is good. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, actually going out and securing the supply chain mm -hmm. the way the Chinese government has done mm -hmm. for their companies mm -hmm. or by incentivizing us to go and do that mm -hmm. would definitely help and I think it's, it's, it's required also. Right. If you look at it today, China doesn't own 80% of the minerals, but they're processing 80% of the minerals, right. regardless of where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. So that's all because of the way the government has moved. Neera Chopra added another Olympic medal to his uh, and the nation's tally. The defending Olympic javelin champion secured India's first silver medal of uh, the Paris edition. The competition was very good and that is the day of every athlete. Today was the day of Arsad. कभी जब बात करें टोक्यो की और बुडापेस्ट की वहाँ पे अपना दिन था या एशियन गेम्स में अपना दिन था तो हर एक एथलीट का जो बॉडी है वो एक एक उस दिन अलग ही उसमें होती है हर चीज परफेक्ट होती है जैसे आज अरसद की थी देखो जी ये तो खुशी के आंसू हैं आ जाते हैं लेकिन बहुत खुशी है और जो बच्चा लेके आया वो बीमारा लेके आया गोल्ड लेके आया सिल्वर लेके आया बीमारा लेके आया लेकिन हमने कोई वो नहीं है जो दुख उन बच्चों का है जो उन समय इतने दोनों मैं कर लग रहे बच्चे आरे मैं सिल्वर गोल्ड में कैसा भी ले नहीं पाए लेकिन सब मैं अपने बच्चे खातर नहीं सोच रहा भाई जा रहे हैं कुछ न कुछ करके आएंगे that was uh, Neera Chopra's mother, whose comments have uh, won so many hearts. Uh, moving on, double bronze medal winner in shooting, Manu Bhakar and hockey goalkeeper Shrijesh, who also won the bronze, have been named as India's flag bearers for the closing ceremony of the Paris Olympics on Sunday. Shrijesh, along with the hockey team, won consecutive bronze medals at Tokyo and Paris Olympics. Manu Bhakar became the first athlete in independent India to win two medals in the same Olympics. India's first individual Olympic gold medalist, Abhinav Bindra, praised Bhakar's achievement, calling it an inspiring story for generations to come. Let's start with Manu Bhakar uh, and what a spectacular run she's had. Yes, absolutely amazing. I mean, to go back home with uh, two bronze medals and a fourth place finish, it's been an incredible, incredible achievement for her. I'm so inspired and simply proud of her. I mean, mm. from how she finished in, in, in Tokyo to show the resilience, to show the, char show the character that she's uh, displayed, uh, to keep at it, to not give up, uh, is an inspiring story for generations of Indians to come. And in an extensive interview with Shirin Bhan, uh, Bindra also spoke about the heartbreak suffered by wrestler Vinesh Fogart, who failed to make weight for her gold medal bout and got disqualified. Bindra, who met Fogart after her disqualification, said that every Indian should be proud of what she has achieved. Bindra also said the world wrestling body should consider changing rules to ensure athletes compete in their natural weight categories to ensure safety and protect their health. 
You know, let's talk about the big heartbreak for India, and that is what happened as far as Vinesh Fogart is concerned. And, and you went and met her, you had a conversation with her. You know, while the post-mortem is underway on what happened, what could have been done differently, what went wrong, what wasn't done, and so on and so forth, uh, from, a, from an athlete's perspective, from, from her perspective, and someone who's dealt with adversity, and someone who's, he, who's you know, hit rock bottom and sort of risen up, what do you see uh, her, her mental state at, at this point in time? Obviously, she's devastated. Um, I can fully empathize with her. Uh, I can't even imagine what she would be going through. You know, I had heartbreaks uh, in my sports career, but you know, what she's gone through, I can't even understand. I can't, I didn't, I met her, but I didn't even know what to tell her. Um, what did she say to you? No, I mean, it was just, general talk on, on you know you know on life uh, yeah. and how life can be unfair and you know sport uh, sometimes did, can did be did she brutal. have an assessment of what went wrong oh, we didn't even get into get into, get that, into yeah. that uh, but my i just went to offer your support support to her and and, and and to be there for her and i think that's what she needs at the moment and i think uh, the country must rally behind her to in these difficult times. Mm. It's, 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 it's a very, very, very difficult period for her. And, you know, she's gone through a tough period yeah. with all what's happened in, 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 in the course of the last year or so. And to come where she's come has been incredible. Yeah. It's been absolutely incredible. And India really should be very, very, very proud of her. No, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, every Indian should be very proud of what she's been able to achieve. But, you know, in, in her story, there's, there's many stories that come up. One, I think, for the first time, the brutality of what an elite sport and competing at the Olympics means. I mean, 100 grams, that was the difference between her winning possibly the gold and being disqualified. I mean, I think for the first time, people truly understood the full force of what an athlete has to go through. Yeah. Uh, it's you know, not an easy business no, here. It's, eh? not. it's tough. Uh, and, you know, you put your heart and soul into it. and. Uh, Sometimes that is the difference between winning and not winning, uh, disqualification or, or, or being legitimate to, to be able to participate. Uh, sport is hard. It's very, very, very hard. And that's why, you know, India must look at failure very differently. I think mm. society on its own looks down on failure in India. And I think it's high time that, you know, society and, and, and the youth of the country become more sporting in nature. You have mm. to, uh, yes, uh, you you want to go there and win no question about that you know you want to put your best foot forward and, and be on the podium but you know there are 10,000 odd athletes here only 300 go back with gold medals so uh, the, the, the people who don't they're not losers mm. they've gained they've, they've represented your country there are only 10,000 athletes here in the whole of there are 10,000 best athletes on this planet mm. so you can imagine how brutal the competition is. You can imagine how tough that competition is. And I think we have to just look at failure very differently. Mm. Uh, of course, we have to learn from it. We have to learn to fail well. We have to uh, un take learnings out of uh, every experience and, and try and get better. And, 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 and sport is a human endeavor. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you have to keep going. You have to remain resilient. You have to remain patient. Mm. And you have to learn to remain positive, and, and, and you have to back your athletes. You can't just be with your athlete when he when the she, going's good. When the going's good, yeah. that's very convenient, and, and and that's not the way uh, we should look at sport and, and our athletes. Uh, we have to appreciate uh, sport very differently. And you can catch the exclusive conversation with Abhinav Bindra at uh, 6 p.m. and 9:30 p.m. right here on CNBC TV 18. But that is a wrap on this edition of Business 360 News and Updates. Continue right here on CNBC TV 18.